This is the M1 MacBook Air, the baseline MacBook that Apple sells today that is two and a half years old. This is the only M1 Mac still available that was released in November of 2020. And since then, we've seen upgrades to the M2 MacBook Air and the 13-inch MacBook Pro, along with two generations of the 14 and 16-inch MacBook Pros, yet this guy is still available for you to buy today. So should you buy it in 2023? What should you pay? And should you upgrade the specs? And listen, I'm just going to tell you that, yes, you should probably buy it. For most people, for most things, this laptop will do exactly what you need it to, and not just okay, it will do it really, really well at a good price too. Sure, this looks just like the MacBook Air from 10 years ago with basically the exact same size and the wedge shape that we've come to know and love, but you know what? It still looks great. This unibody aluminum construction just looks amazing still. It still looks and feels like a premium device, and the wedge shape actually makes this one of the most comfortable typing experiences on a laptop, period, if not the most comfortable. Hey, there's a reason that the MacBook Air has been the world's best-selling laptop for so long. This M1 MacBook Air has been my daughter's primary laptop for the last two years, which she's used for schoolwork and for research and a bit of Minecraft, and of course, as a YouTube viewer. I've used this very laptop for my full-time job, everyday computing, and making these YouTube videos on this channel. Between my daughter and me, we definitely cover a wide spectrum of use cases and the performance of this machine never disappoints. This right here is the base model M1 MacBook Air with the eight core CPU, the seven core GPU, eight gigabytes of unified memory and a 256 gigabyte SSD. And although the newer M2 Macs have higher benchmark scores, in regular use, you're going to be really hard pressed to feel a difference between them. And actually in some cases, the M1 Air actually feels faster than the M2 Air because when equipped with just eight gigabytes of memory, the computers swap back and forth the memory to the SSD, which is actually faster on the M1 versions, the base M1 versions compared to the base M2 versions. The heaviest workload I do on my computers on a regular basis is video editing for this channel. And with all of my regular work applications open, web browsers with many, many tabs, email, Teams, etc., the timeline performance in Final Cut Pro is really good. I'm using four streams of 4K footage, color graded, and there's no drop in performance in the timeline or with the playback of the video. So take away the video editing part and this thing just flies for regular computer work. Now, whether you're a student or a professional, whatever that means today, or just a casual home user, the M1 MacBook Air will definitely fit right into your workflow. And I know that some of you are thinking that this computer just cannot be a professional computer with just two ports for connecting devices and peripherals and the M1's limit to just a single external display. And you know what? I agree, that can be an issue. And that's where today's sponsor, Ugreen, comes in. The Ugreen 9-in-1 docking station is a USB-C dock with nine ports of connectivity. This allows you to connect multiple devices, including displays or external devices like mice or thumb drives or SSDs. This compact dock uses USB-C at 10 gigabits per second, allowing for fast file transfers to external storage or even ethernet. The beauty of this Ugreen dock is the ability to connect multiple displays, even on computers like the M1 and M2 based MacBooks. Using DisplayLink technology, you can connect two 4K displays at 60 Hz. You have the option of either mirroring the displays or extending the displays to help expand your desktop and productivity. And you can save 25% today on this Ugreen 9-in-1 docking station using the code and information in the description below. And my thanks to Ugreen for sponsoring this video. And speaking of displays, the built-in 13.3 inch retina display is actually really good. It gets up to 400 nits of brightness, which is actually really bright in most rooms, but this also means it's usable in a bright coffee shop or a conference room. It supports true tone technology like most Apple displays, and it also supports P3 wide color for very accurate color representation. This is great for me as a video maker because it shows me just how bad I am at color grading. But, if you're working with photo tools or anything else that requires accurate colors, then this display will do pretty well for you. And honestly, if this were the only display on the other MacBooks, just bigger, it would be hard to complain about. It essentially is the same display as what I get on the 27 inch 5K studio display. So yeah, it's pretty good. Now, one of the best features of this MacBook Air is the fanless design. And how many times have you been in a classroom or a conference room and the laptop next to you starts blowing loud, hot air. No, not the guy talking, the laptop. It's distracting. 
And as COVID kicked into high gear in early 2020, we were all doing video calls for work and for school. I remember my daughter's MacBook Air with the i3 processor would basically run the fans all day with just a Zoom call going. She had to wear headphones because it was so loud and constant throughout the entire day. The M1 Air is just dead silent 100% of the time, no matter what you throw at it. And the good news is that it almost never has any effect on performance with the super low thermal requirements of the M1 chip inside. Another benefit of this computer partially related to not having a fan is better battery life. Apple says that this MacBook Air will get up to 15 hours of wireless web surfing, and I think that they're probably pretty close to that. When I use this computer for my day job when working downstairs, I can get well over a day's worth of work out of it. I use a number of the obvious office apps and a lot of browser tabs. I take internet calls for many hours a day, and of course, I check out some YouTube. I can finish the day with about 40 to 45% battery left over, allowing me to get almost two days of battery out of this machine. If it's just being used as a casual couch serving machine, which we do sometimes, it just gets used an hour or two each day. This will last over a week because the standby power consumption is almost nothing. I get no battery anxiety using this machine at home or when I take it to the office. And just to round things out, the 720p camera and the speakers and the microphones built in are all more than acceptable for this price point for this laptop. And actually, the speakers are way better than anything you're going to find in a more expensive PC laptop. For school or work, for meetings, for entertainment, these will get the job done. Now, how much should you pay for an M1 MacBook Air? Well, Apple sells this two and a half year old computer for the same amount it did in 2020, $9.99 for this base model, which I have here. I do not think that you should pay $9.99 today when you can get it on Amazon using the link below for just $7.99, brand new. Now, that is an absolute steal and sometimes you can get it for just a little bit less brand new, but $7.99 for this performance in this package is a total complete bargain. If your budget requires, you can still save a few more dollars and go for a renewed version on Amazon, but I can't vouch for the refurbishment process. Now, what if you need or want some upgrades like more memory or a larger SSD? Well. For that, your best bet is to buy refurbished directly from Apple. Whether you upgrade the memory to 16 gigabytes or the storage to 512 gigabytes, you will save about $180 off the new price and get basically a brand new machine with a full warranty where Apple has done the best refurbishment process to a device that you can find. I mean, really, I've bought a lot of Apple refurbs and they are indistinguishable from brand new. Also, in my opinion, if you're an adult and you want this computer to last another five years or more, I would get this bumped up to 16 gigabytes of memory. It will be worth it. Even with super fast unified memory inside, apps will continue to want more memory over time. And this will also relieve any possible pressure or stress on the SSD. But if this is truly just for casual use for, for a kid to do homework, stick with the base spec and you'll still be very happy. For anyone wondering if you should upgrade beyond the MacBook Air to one of the Pro models, I'm sticking to my guns on this one and saying that for most people, for most things, you just don't need to. But if you like the newer design, you like the extra performance headroom, or you just like to be cool rocking a pro machine, then by all means, get it. You will be happy and you will love it. I did and I do. But don't be afraid to pick up one of these M1 Airs in 2023 if that's what your needs or budget requires. Now, I purposely did not compare the M1 version to the M2 version of the MacBook Air in this video because I think the M1 version still stands on its own even today. But if you do have more questions about the M1 MacBook Air, let me know in the comments below. And if you do want to see a full comparison of the M1 Air versus the M2 Air, check out this video right over here. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you want, and I'll see you next time.